We're glad to have Sister Vanita and her son Abe with us tonight. Remember Abe when he was a boy, he's a he's a full fledged man now. Now this will be the seventeenth message on this subject of assurance. And there's only one more message I feel I feel as though I should have a lot more on it. The more I dwell upon this subject of assurance, the more incompetent uh, I feel. But I see a, a great necessity to to speak on this theme of assurance. It's uh, it's not common in professing Christians. It's not altogether their fault, but spiritual life is of the sort you can't live it if you don't have assurance. You can work hard at it and all that, but it's difficult to live for God if you don't know whether you're in or out. Amen. Now, something we're going to look at, the vantage point we're going to develop tonight is the role of right doctrine in having assurance. Because in the kingdom of God, everything is based on the foundation of faith. Amen. <clears throat> and faith comes by hearing. That's right. <clears throat> and hearing comes mm -hmm. also. <laughs> yes. I mean, he gives you an ear to hear. He that had an ear to hear, where'd you get that ear to hear? <laughs> and so what's said in the name of the Lord is critical. Yes. Amen. What is told the people of God, whatever the venue may be, this is critical stuff. Yes. And nobody should spend their time with trivia yes. Amen. when you're talking to the people of God. As I have mentioned, the reality and enjoyment of Assurance as described in Scripture is not common, but, but it can be. Assurance is intended for all the people of God. Yeah. Actually, there's no benefit associated with salvation that's not intended for all the people of God. Whatever God gives through Christ is for all those who are in Christ. There's no special graces that are designed only for a cluster here and a cluster there. Mm -hmm. It's not that way. And consistent and triumphant living, I mean, the scripture does say that we are, Christ died so that we could reign in life. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's Romans 5, 17. You could reign, are you reigning in life or is life reigning over you? Yeah. <laughs> are you over the circumstances or are you under the circumstances? You know, someone will say, well, I'm fired under the circumstances. I feel like, you know, well, what are you doing under there? Amen. But in order to consistent and triumphant living, this assurance comes in. It's a factor in this. You can't make yourself be triumphant. Amen. <laughs> We've been called to a vigorous race. It's a long race. Sometimes it's through uh, the desert a trial. Sometimes it's in the fire, tribulation, the furnace of tribulation. It's a long, hard race. And it's imperative that you have assurance to run this race successfully. Now my, my aim is to, to do my part at least. Mm -hmm. In, in bringing that assurance to you and showing, enabling you to take hold of it. It's there. Take hold of it. You've been called into a warfare. Now, this is not powder puffs. <laughs> what do you call it? Paintball. This isn't that paintball stuff. These are real spiritual bullets, let me tell you, or arrows to use in scripture language we're facing. And it's in this context you are expected to grow. Yes, amen. Yeah. While you're running, you are expected yeah. to grow. Yes, that's 
When you're in a furnace, you're expected to walk about in it. Uh -huh. How are you going to do that? Uh, assurance is at least one of the key mm -hmm. factors. Now, my texts have to do with this, although it may not sound like it on the surface. Ephesians 3.12 says, In whom, at the, the whom is Christ, in Christ we have boldness and access with confidence. What is that? That's a breakdown of assurance. Assurance is like, it's like a three-legged stool here. You've got boldness. You're not intimidated by the circumstance. You're not intimidated by the people. You're not intimidated by experience. You have access. That's to access to God. Wherever you are, you have access to God. With confidence. That is, you know it, there'll be some reciprocation on the other end. In Hebrews 10.22, it says, Let's draw near now. Enough of this living at a distance. If you've been prone to kind of be standoffish from God, let this be the last night yeah. Amen. that you live like that. Yeah. You don't need to. Christ has opened up the way. Amen. He has opened up a new and a living way. He's opened it up. It's, it's for commerce. <laughs> it's, it's to be used. Let's draw near now with a true heart in full assurance of faith. There it is, see? It's hard to pray if you're not quite sure what you're praying is right and if God's a hearing and all the ifs, you know. It's, mm -hmm. And everyone's had uh, their tenure in that kind of praying. Mm -hmm. Well, you come away, I wonder, you know, wonder if... Uh, one way to have a true full of... The true heart and a full assurance of faith when you pray is pray for the right thing. I mean, that's, that's one, one way to gain this. So let's look into this. Assurance is that the root of it is faith. That's what I want to develop here briefly. The root of assurance is faith. It's, it's called, in Hebrews 10.22, the full assurance of faith. Another place is called the full assurance of hope. And hope is faith in a forward posture. See, hope is the looking forward part of faith. And in Colossians, it's called the full assurance of understanding. These are, assurance has, has this faith, hope, understanding, and they all yeah. calm the heart. Amen. When you have assurance, you do, you're not easily rattled. I still, uh, I'm in the body, so I still have some difficulties here, but I've, I'm growing in this. I can sense it. And good, the, the closer you get to the end of your life, and I'm kind of in the last stage, you know, of my life, this fact of knowing and having assurance becomes very precious. Your physical, uh, well, maybe the, your outward person, your outer man, the outward man, mm -hmm. is deteriorating, and you're, from one viewpoint, you're less able. Mm -hmm. But see, in your spirit, you, you can't be less able. If you've been in Christ 60 years, yeah. mm -hmm. let's see, I've been in Christ. Uh, 70 years, you can't be less than you were when you started. Amen. Because your biggest battle mm -hmm. is going to be at the end. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's going to be the biggie. Assurance. <clears throat> Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. We have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him. What does that mean? The faith of Him. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean Christ's faith. Mm -hmm. It means the faith that comes from Christ. Amen. Like this is the house of the Blakeleys. What does that mean? This is our house. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, 
that it belongs to us. The faith of him is the faith that belongs to Christ that he, he gave to you. The, the words by faith and through faith occur over 50 times from Acts through Revelation. Over 50 times. By faith, through faith. And then there's more that's in faith. There's a lot of them. Now, I, I'm sorry to have to say this, but faith is not common in the modern church. I've mentioned this before, and I want to mention it again because it's very troubling. The accumulated Christians of this fair city couldn't shut down one porn shop. Hmm? I mean, there hadn't been any major book burnings. Why is that? Something is missing. And I'm saying it doesn't have to be missing. Yes, amen. Amen. Now we're not here just to gripe because it's missing. Yeah. We're here to say in this day when Jesus is seated at the right hand of God, administrating the kingdom of God, ruling over all, uh -huh. yeah. nobody excluded, mm -hmm. there is no excuse mm -hmm. for any person or congregation to be come up short. Yes, amen. Amen. There isn't any reason for it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I think really way down deep, and that's what we want to get down deep into people's hearts. People know this, that are, that are trusted in Christ to some degree. They know this, but we want to fan that flame. And... Now this accounts uh, the frequent mentions of by faith, through faith, in faith. This accounts for the extensive doctrine delivered by the apostles. Yes. You know, the early church continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. What, what, what was that? Yeah. What was that doctrine? I hope you understand me when I say this, but it was not what they wrote about marriage. That's right. mm -hmm. That wasn't the doctrine. Mm -hmm. It isn't what they said about the necessity of moral purity. Although they did say teach about this, but that wasn't the doctrine. The doctrine is the body of truth that surrounds Christ. Amen. Christ is the hub and center of the doctrine. In fact, it's called the doctrine of Christ. Amen. Not the doctrine Christ preached, but the doctrine that centers, centers in Christ. Mm -hmm. And the apostolic doctrine pertains what they said about Christ, who he is, what he did, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. That's the doctrine. Amen. And all of the correction and instruction in righteousness, that's not their doctrine. That's to position people so they can take in the doctrine. Now, there's a, it's unfortunate, actually, but there's too much corrective preaching these days. It isn't that it should, be, it should be rejected or omitted. I'm not suggesting that. I'm saying at some point you've got to get beyond the necessity for having to be corrected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. You've got to get to the point where you can stand on your own two feet. Uh -huh. And you're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And you're not unstable anymore. Amen. Amen. That's what assurance is all about. A valid doctrine is summarized in the phrase like the doctrine of Christ, as mentioned in Hebrews 6.1, or the, the word of Christ, that's the doctrine, as Colossians 3.16, or the gospel of Christ, that's a doctrine, as Romans 1.16, or the record God has given of his son, that's the gospel, that's 1 John 5.10-11. This is what's called preaching Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. 1 Corinthians 1 23. 1 Corinthians 2 2. We, we preach Christ. Yes. Well, they said a lot of things about mm -hmm. other matters, mm -hmm. but they were on the periphery. They were not in the heart. 
Assurance comes from heart preaching, not periphery, periphery preaching. It's unfortunate that the church is in such sad shape. Because it's got so much has to be said about correction and struggles and righteousness, getting the folks straightened out. And, but this is not intended to be like a, an everlasting project. Yeah. The purpose is to stabilize God's people. Yeah. So that Paul has to go away, the people still survive. That's where assurance comes in. Everything makes that makes for assurance has to do with directly with Christ. Mm -hmm. Believe me when I tell you, brother, you can't be stable because you have confidence you're not going to commit adultery. Uh -huh. Now, you, you better not be committing adultery. Uh -huh. This is stuff you go to hell for. Let's just be straight about it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's stuff you kicked out of the church for. Let's just be straight about this. But this is not what makes for assurance. You may have some advanced degree of self-discipline, and you may have learned to kind of control yourself pretty good. Uh -huh. You can't base your assurance on that. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. About the time you do, you'll fall flat on your face at an unexpected time. Mm -hmm. Your assurance has to be based on something bigger than you, Amen. something Amen. bigger than what you've got. It's got to be, see? Amen. Thank God it, God's made provision Amen. for this. Now, I guess I just, I guess that tonight I'm going to just like preach some assurance into you. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Now, I said, what, what association is there with, of doctrine with assurance? So I'm going to just... Yeah. Demonstrate it for you. There's some key points of doctrine that promote mm -hmm. assurance. They all have to do with God and Christ. Now, the first thing I want to know, there'll be some controversy about this, but <laughs> frankly, I don't care. I can fully defend this position. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make any difference who challenges it. So, but I don't want to have to do that, and I don't think I have to here. There's a subject of election. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, this is not a popular subject. There is no Bible college course on election. <laughs> but it is in the Bible. Amen. And it's not just here and there. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you a couple of texts. Amen. The psalmist, I don't want to be a, I don't want to know less than the psalmist, yeah. you know. Because yeah. he was made perfect. He was not made perfect without us. He, did, he didn't have what we have. That's right. He wanted it, but he didn't have it because mm -hmm. it wasn't for his time. Psalm 4, 3. But know, <laughs> know this now. Have a cognition of this, an understanding of this. Know that the Lord has set apart yeah. him that is godly for himself. Well, I'll tell you, that's a piece of good news. Sometimes Amen. sometimes you may feel like God's the only one to have anything to do with you, but that's all you need. You know? Well, here's one, 1 Thessalonians 1, 4. Paul writes to the Thessalonians, and he said, Knowing, beloved brethren, your election of God. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, the words elect and election are mentioned 23 times in the Bible. It never applies to men electing. Uh -huh. Now, if you know the Bible, you know this is true. If you don't, then you got to get to know it. Get an old-fashioned concordance and look it up. Uh -huh. Elect. No man has ever said in the Bible to have elect elected something. Uh -huh. It's always God that elects. Amen. Amen. There's a elect people because God elected them, not that he elected God. Uh -huh. Election. This has got to be preached. It's got to be preached as the Scripture preaches it. I mean, I know that some men have attached all kind of hoary dog, doctrines and dogmas and traditions to this word, but you got to, It's got to be taken as God spoke about it. Amen. I'm not ashamed to use the word. God has spoken it. For people to be have assurance, at some point you've got to know God chose me. Amen. 
Uh, you may not be able to satisfactorily explain this. It's best not to attach a bunch of ifs to it. And I'm telling you that you can. You can in your heart know God chose me. Well, Paul said God chose me from the mother's womb. I mean, that's, that's what he did. <laughs> Don't you know that built some... Uh, if you know that, you can say, well, if God chose me, then who's, what am I going to worry about somebody else? The election should be preached. Redemption. You want to have assurance, you've got to hear about redemption. Now, as far back as Job, he lived roughly in the time of Abraham. There was no Bible, no law. <laughs> and he said, Job did, Job 19.25, I know that my Redeemer, oh, Redeemer, how did, how did Job know about Redeemer? Well, the Lord whispered that to his heart. I know my Redeemer lives, that he shall stand in the earth on the latter day. I know that. Do you? The question is, do you know that? Do you know your Redeemer, the one who purchased you at a high cost make it, you're not your own you you, you really don't, you are, you are not your own you're bought with a price yeah. if you know that it'll make for assurance Romans 3:24 says being justified mm -hmm. freely by his grace through the redemption yeah, that's right that's in Christ Jesus. Now listen, brethren. What Jesus buys, he takes care of. Yes, amen. Amen. He doesn't neglect it. And he bought you. When actually you were not a saleable unit. Yes, right. You didn't have anything to recommend you to somebody to buy you. Uh -huh. But he did. He bought you. That means you're under his wings. Amen. Hmm? Mm -hmm. That means he's for you. Now the church has got to hear about this. God's people have to hear this doctrine about redemption. We have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. See? Yeah. Your body's even been redeemed. You've been given the Holy Spirit until he redeems your body. The redemption of the body is called in Ephesians. See? You've got to know about this. If you know about this, then you won't place a high value on life in this world. You'll be Amen. anticipating the world to come. Amen. Hebrews 9, 12, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't know many things that are eternal. In fact, as a matter of etymological observation, there is not a language extant in the world for which there is a precise word eternal as is used in the Bible. Why? Because eternal is outside the perimeter of human experience. Yeah. And human knowledge can't go beyond human experience. So here we're talking about a redemption that's eternal. After the world has passed away. After the day of judgment has occurred, the redemption is going to still be in place. We know it is because we're going to see the Lamb of God as it had been slain. That is just like he was newly saying. Jesus is going to appear as though he had just died. Because so far as God is concerned, Jesus just died. That's how effective that redemption is. And when you realize this, I don't matter how far down you may plummet or how helpless you may seem, that redemption can bring you up. You've got to know about it. And to know about it, you've got to hear about it. And I wish there was more on this. In fact, perhaps this is a good subject for prayer. Pray that more people would hear about redemption. It's in Christ Jesus. Now here's another matter. Remember, we're relating assurance to doctrine. The adoption. <laughs> this is a good good doctrine of scripture. The adoption. Romans 8.15 says, You have received the spirit of adoption. 
whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Yeah. And contrary to some of the spiritual baloney, Abba does not mean Daddy. Yeah. No person can substantiate this etymologically either, I can tell you. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus prayed Abba. He wasn't saying daddy. That's an infantile yeah. view of a father. Abba is a spiritually adult view of the father. Uh -huh. yeah. That you are dependent upon God. You know you are and you know God will supply your need. Amen. You ever see the spirit of adoption. God took you who were dead in trespasses and sins and alienated from him and he brought you legally into his family. Do you, know, you can know that. If you don't really know that, you can know that. You're part of the family. And the family like Jesus is in the family. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Spirits are just made, made perfect are in the family. See, you're in the family. You've been adopted. You have family rights and privileges. Romans 8, 16, you say, well, I, I don't see this. Well, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> That's with your spirit, not with your soul, with your spirit. Mm -hmm. See, man is comprised of, in order of priority, Spirit, soul, body. Some theologians, they're not really theologians, but some theologians say the spirit and the body, is, spirit and the soul is the same thing. Come on. The Word of God distinguishes between the soul and the spirit. How can they be the same thing? Your soul is the rational and emotional part of your human makeup, it has to do more with your body. But your soul vacillates. It can go up, it can go down. Sometimes you have to say to your soul, Where art thou cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God, he shall be, be the health of thy countenance. Amen. Your spirit, that's the real you in Christ. That's the real person. Now, if a person's religion is soulish, how can I say this is nicely as possible. To me, the modern praise and worship movement is too soulish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can turn it on, mm -hmm. yeah. turn it off. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you can start it at 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. shut it off at 10.30. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your religion is soulish, you're in bad trouble. Mm -hmm. And a lot of preaching and teaching is too soulish. It's too much connected with the body and too little connected with the spirit. The Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit. Your renewed spirit. You're a, you're a child of God. But if you're out of tune with your spirit, see, and you're a, you've been listening to your soul all the time, you miss that witness. Ephesians 1 5 being predestinated that's right that's in the original too yeah, that's right. being predestinated having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will now that, that tied it up pretty good yeah, that's right. there in other words that God intended all along before he made the world, God intended to have sons and daughters. Yes, amen. Amen. But he couldn't do it as mankind stood. Mm -hmm. So he, be, he sent his only begotten son into the world, see, mm -hmm. so he could beget. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Remember at the end, Hebrews 2.13, Jesus will say, Behold, I am the children which thou hast given me. Yeah, you're, you're, one, you're some of the children. And it's a, this, God wants it this way. 1 mm -hmm. John 3.22 says, Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, 
because we do his commandments and do because we keep his commandments and do those things well pleasing in the sight. Mm -hmm. Keep his commandments doesn't mean obey. Mm -hmm. He means exactly what it says. Amen. Keep. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I don't let him get away from me. That's right. Amen. Then you obey. Yeah. That's what the children do. Mm -hmm. I have uh Ten children, two, two of them are in the glory already. They, out, they outrun me, two of them. If you were to ask some of my living children, I got what, four of them here tonight. If you were to ask them, are you Brother Blakely's son? And they said, or daughter, and they said, you know, I'm not sure. I, I live in the house there, and eat at the table, but I, I really don't know. I've been meaning to look into that, and I've been meaning to have a little mm -hmm. uh, DNA check. Yeah. Well, you know there are a lot of people in Christ that that's how they think. Yeah, that's right. They don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know. They've been begotten of God. Yeah. Amen. And that this is what God has intended. Yeah. That's got to be preached. Then there's the matter of salvation. Salvation is preached to more than just to alienated people. Yeah. Amen. I know I was I was raised up under the hearing this that you preach salvation to sinners and you teach the saints. Hmm. <laughs> Paul said, I he talked to one of the better churches of the Bible. He says, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you too. Yes. Amen. Romans 1 15. A preach is to announce this gospel's got to be announced, and you never outgrow your need to announce it. That's what this table's all about. If all you had, if the gospel was just meant for people outside of Christ, then what in the world do we have this table for? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. It's because in this world mm -hmm. you're prone to forget mm -hmm. about salvation, that you were lifted up out of a horrible pit and God put your feet on a solid rock and put a new song of praise in your mouth and you, the circumstances of life will wash that away if you're not careful. Amen. Salvation. Isaiah prophesied, of the saved... With joy shall they draw water out of the wells of salvation. That's Isaiah 12, 3. Paul said to the Ephesians, a bit more advanced than most churches, in whom also we trusted after ye heard the word of truth, ye trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after ye believed ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 6, 17, take for a helmet the helmet of salvation. Hebrews 5, 9, being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to them that obey him. Salvation is a subject that can be delineated at length. Yes. Long after you come into Christ. In fact, I can tell you, speaking for myself, most of what I knew about salvation I learned a long time after I come into Christ. Because salvation is big. Amen. It includes like the intercession of Jesus and the mediation of Jesus. See, It includes like the strengthening of the Holy Spirit and continual access to the grace of God. All of this is under the general canopy of salvation. And God's people have to hear about it. To have assurance, you have to hear about salvation. And here the faith comes by hearing now, hearing by the word of God. It's necessary to hear about eternal life. Yes, amen. It's got to be preached. Eternal life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. John said, this is the promise that he had promised. He takes all the promise of God, he boils it down into one one promise. This is the promise that he had promised us even eternal life. First John 5.11 says, this is the record. Mm -hmm. He's writing to Christian people now. Right. Yeah. This is the record that God has given unto us eternal yeah. life. Amen. John said to the his readers, these things I've written unto you, little children, that ye might know you have eternal life. Amen. 1 John 5.20, we know 
that the Son of God is come, the idea is he, he is come and he stayed. Mm -hmm. Son of God is come and has given us an understanding mm -hmm. that we might know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in God and even in the Father and in his Son, yeah. Jesus Christ. This, yeah. this is eternal life. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. <clears throat> and the next verse says, little children, Keep yourselves from idols. That's right. Yep. What, what, what kind of idols is he talking about? Baal? Huh. He's talking about false gods. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And other Jesuses. Yes, that's right. See, Paul said to the Corinthians, You heard and you have swallowed up another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. Amen, that's right. You gotta believe what I'm telling you here. Mm -hmm. There are Jesuses preached that aren't the real Jesus. Yeah, right. And there are gods that are called a God, Father, Jesus Christ, that aren't the real God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not the God Jesus teaches about. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he, eternal life, that's a critical that's a critical thing to know. Mm -hmm. If you don't know you have eternal life, you are at a decided handicap. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're going to go to hell. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you might. If you don't come into this understanding, eternal life, you've got to hear that. It's got to be said. You've got to hear, because faith comes by hearing. You've got to hear that nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. You've got to hear that. That's got to be said. It has to be articulated. You can't just depend on people going home and reading that. Yeah, amen. amen. That's right. Faith comes by hearing, not by reading. Yes, amen. Oh, what God, people. This is how God ordained it. Yes, that's amen. right, man. He that hath ears to hear, not he that hath eyes to read. Uh -huh. yes. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Yeah. Marvelous truth. Nothing can separate us. That is no external influence mm. can impact your position in Christ Jesus. Mm. You can fall, I understand. You can fall from it, you can leave your first love. I, I understand that. And when I ask them, what do you believe? He said, well, we believe you can fall away. I said, well, that's, is there anything else? I mean, <laughs> that, surely that's not the synopsis of your message. Yeah. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It's true, but this, this, this is not the focus of our message, is you can fall away. Message of our the focus of our message is nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ Jesus, you are baptized into Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ Jesus, there's no influence external to you that can impact upon you and, and take you away from Christ. Amen. Or cause God not to love you or whatever. But you've got to hear it. And it's good to hear that you've been united with God. Yes. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. One spirit. I say one spirit. Now, if you, if you and I were one spirit, that'd be one thing, but you and God? <laughs> well, you've got to hear it. You've got to hear that. Or put it this way. We are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. Why did, why did he say that? Well, that's referring, of course, to Adam and Eve. Eve, he took a rib, and I gather there was some flesh attached to it when he took it out. We're part of Christ. Amen. And we've been joined to the Lord. But if you don't know that, you'll be, di you'll be distracted by the difficulties and vicissitudes of life. Here's John has this word to say, 1 John 4, 16. We have known and believe the love of God, the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwells in God, mm -hmm. and God in him. Mm -hmm. oh, boy. Yeah. Now the world doesn't have anything to offer that compares with yeah. that. Yeah. You could ask a Mohammedan. Let me tell you. Let me ask you. Are you joined to Allah? 
fess up now. Well, let me tell you, I am joined to my God. Amen. That's a testimony people can give. God hasn't sent you out to say, to expose Allah. Anyone that has really tried to trust Allah knows already. He can't be trusted. He may send you out to kill yourself, kill other people. See, but this, if you know you're in God and God's in you, well, you, you'll, be, you'll, you'll be bold. Yeah. You'll hold your ground. Here's something that needs to be said. Remember, I'm, I'm emphasizing these things have to be say, it's said. They have to be declared. We have peace with God. Being justified by faith, we have, yes. we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you may not be able to walk up to the President of the United States. You have to go through some kind of protocol, probably never get in. You probably couldn't walk up to the Governor of Missouri and just walk, a, but you can walk right in yeah. to the presence of God. Amen. You've got access Amen. to God. Now, does that change your problems? So you got a situation you can't handle, you know you can't handle it, now you can beat yourself up trying to handle it, or you can say, no, look, i got access to God, I'm going yeah. to spread this letter out yeah. before the Lord, like Hezekiah did. He got this threatening letter, and he knew, hey, we can't contend with Sennacherib. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we're going to let God read this letter. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. And you've got more access than Hezekiah had. That's right. Here's another thing you want to, we've got to hear these things now, that's my point, you've got to hear these things. That there's preservation, God preserves you. The Lord is faithful, Paul said to the Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 3.3, 3, The Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and Keep you from evil. Amen. Now, if I could just hold on to that word. Mm -hmm. See, now you've heard it. You've heard it like I've heard it. Uh -huh. The Lord shall establish you uh -huh. and keep you from evil. Now, your job, hope. Hang on to that word. Amen. And as you do, it'll work assurance right. Amen. in you. First Peter 1 5. Who are you? We are those who are kept. By the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So God's keeping us. And who's who is it that God can't keep? I mean, He's God's keeping us through faith. That's your faith. Uh -huh. It is all the way up to the salvation ready to be revealed. That's when Jesus comes. Uh -huh. So it's all it's Till he come. That's, yeah, uh -huh. that's all the way up to then. Amen. Now, if you know that, you'll address life mm -hmm. differently uh -huh. than a person who doesn't know this. Yeah. person who doesn't know this, my heart goes out to them because I was once in this number. That number, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know this. I didn't know that, as Jude said, God is able to keep you from falling. Uh -huh. You're worried about falling? God is able to keep to him who is able to keep you from falling yes. uh -huh. and present you faultless mm -hmm. before his presence yes. with exceeding joy. Yes. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. He were all going to appear before him, so this That's is a piece right. of good news. Amen. So when I appear before him, I do want to appear faultless. Oh, I don't want to be stained when I'm standing before the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You say, well, I got so many... Listen, you can go tonight, you can go to bed tonight and be 100% pure. Amen. Yeah. Just confess your sins to God. Mm -hmm. He's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and, and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, you'll have to do the same thing to, to, <laughs> tomorrow, but you can go to sleep perfect. Amen. Because of this, because of this situation. Amen. God will preserve you. Got to believe that. And to believe it, you got to hear it. And then there's this matter of answer to prayer. Well, we're experiencing a bit of growth in this area ourselves here. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, if there wasn't any other reason for being obedient, that's a pretty good one right there. 
That's a pretty good one right there. That's a guarantee now. This is a guarantee. 1 John 5, 14. This is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, right. he hears us. Yes, amen. Then the next verse says, we know that if he hears us, we'll have the petitions we asked. Yeah. See, but that has to be preached. That has to be said. You can't hide this from the people. You can't depend on them reading this at home. They might, but that you can't. it's got to be said because faith comes by hearing. As this is said, faith is like a hand. That's right. Amen. Faith is like an eye that yeah. sees what can't be seen otherwise. And you take hold of this and then assurance yeah. starts to come up in you. Amen. That's why John said, we don't, whatsoever things we ask, if he hears us, and he said, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. We, if he hears us, we have whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petitions. Amen. You've got some serious things you're praying about. Serious conditions. Lay hold of that promise. Amen. And there's a matter of comfort. All right. Rick, Hannah. Would you bring me a couple of Kleenex, please? It's a matter of comfort. God's people need comfort. Comfort is the peace be still. You know, it's, yeah. it's quieting the things, difficulties caused by trouble in the world. Uh -huh. Comfort. You know, God said to Isaiah, Comfort ye, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Yeah. They need comfort. Amen. Uh, don't, don't beat them up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to get kind of rough with some of God's people. I know that, but let that be the exception. Yes, amen. If it's, rough, it's rough enough without our brethren beating us up, too. Yeah. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 1 4 says, Who comforteth this is God? Who comforteth us in all yeah. who comforted us in all our tribulation. Why did he do that? Mm -hmm. So we may be able to comfort them that are in any trouble. Mm -hmm. So someone says, well, listen, you can't really understand my situation. You say, yeah, I, I don't understand what you're going through. But this doesn't apply in the kingdom of God. Amen. Because in the kingdom of God, everything's reduced down to the lowest yes. denominator, to the com what's common. No, there's some things that some of God's people go through that I have no idea. Mm -hmm. The difficulties that attended that circumstance. And I've went through some things that a lot of people don't know what that's like. Mm -hmm. But if you were comforted from God, it doesn't make any difference what it was. Mm -hmm. You'll be able with that comfort to comfort any, any kind of trouble. That's right. Because you're down at the root level, see? Right. You're down and you'll be able to... You'll be able to calm somebody's soul. Yes. Uh -huh. But you got to hear that. Mm -hmm. You have to hear that. 2 Corinthians 7, 6. Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down. Cast down means like knocked down. Comforteth us by the coming of Titus. That was the time Paul said, Well, we just spirit of life. I'll to tell you. We were pressed beyond measure, Paul said. We were pressed beyond measure. I just, we were despairing of life. We didn't know whether they're going to live through this or not. But then Titus, <laughs> Titus came. Oh, that changed everything. He told me how things were going over there at the Corinth, and I saw you'd made some advance, and he was comforted. That's right. Who did that? God did that. That's how God does it. Yeah. Two other people. So they have to hear about this this comfort. And here's another thing to hear. It's got to be heard. Now remember, I'm talking about what these are things that have to be said, they have to be heard, because they would stimulate faith, and faith is the thing that makes assurance effective. You've got to hear that what God started, He's going to finish. Yes, amen. You've got to be told that. Philippians 1 6, being confident confident of this very thing. He which hath begun a good work and you will perform it until the day of Christ. Amen. Now, actually, it was a while before I was convinced of this. I wasn't fighting against it, but I just, I didn't see it like I see it now. But, oh, that's blessed to tell God's people this. Listen, some of, all of you that I know personally, 
if you can't see what God's done in you, I can uh -huh. see some of it anyway, and I'll I'll share it with you. If you if you can't see anything God started in you, just I'll tell you some things that I've seen. All of you, I, I know you that well. And then I'll tell you, now look what God started. He's able to perform. Amen. Amen. He'll keep the building project going until it's finished. Amen. Again in 2 Thessalonians 1.11, we pray, we pray always for you that our, isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Not that my God, that our yes. God would count you worthy of this calling mm -hmm. and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Mm -hmm. Amen. God will do that. You have to be told that. Mm -hmm. Brethren, there are a lot of precious believers that have never been told that. Mm -hmm. Some of us sitting right here in this room didn't hear that for a long time. Yeah. Amen. And Somebody was God gracious enough to inform us. Even it was in the Bible all along. I mean, but when you don't, there's some things if you don't know them, you just like read over them. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It's amazing once you know something, how it seems like it's every place in the Bible. Have you, have you noticed that? Amen. Why is that? Because when you know something, it's part of you. Yes, amen. That's right. And you'll see it on every page where you didn't see it before. Well, this is what you want to see in every page that God finishes what he starts. Here's something else. We've received a kingdom. <laughs> Boy. I said a kingdom. Yeah. We've received a kingdom mm -hmm. that can't be shaken. Amen. Now God is gracious enough to give us a, a, a breakdown of this kingdom. Mm -hmm. This is what we've received. He said, ye are come. He said, you be, you're a part of this. Ye have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. Mm -hmm. The heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are rich in heaven, written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Now you've got access to all of that. Amen. You gotta hear it though, see, you gotta hear. <laughs> hear that receive the kingdom, it cannot be shaken. One uh, last thing, that a crown's going to be given. It's just not all about being godly here, although it is about that. Live godly, soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. I mean, that, but that's not the end of the matter. It's what happens after the world passes away. Amen. Amen. And here's what Paul said, speaking of his own life, he said he'd fought a good fight, kept the faith. Mm -hmm. Finish the race. Henceforth, yeah. that is from now on, this is what I'm thinking about. There's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me. Not to me only, yes. <laughs> but to all they that love his appearing. Amen. Now, life can get so difficult for you that. His appearing is just about the only star in the sky. Mm -hmm. But it's a big one. Yeah. Amen. It'll lead you sail home safely. You can navigate with this. You can navigate by this star. Yeah. Then James, after he had really... No, it was actually before he started rebuking this body of people. He said, Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried... He shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. There it is again, that love him bit. <laughs> but you've got to hear that, see, brethren? Yeah. It has to be said. If you, um, you know somebody that hasn't heard these things, don't, don't depend on, and you know them, don't depend on someone else telling them. You tell them. Amen. Amen. You may not be able to expound them a lot. I understand that, but just just tell them what God just tell them what God said yeah. about His people. And what, when you do, assurance starts to. It's not a fledgling youth anymore. Yeah. It starts to kind of grow up. Yeah. And you say, "Well, if, if God be for us, who can be against us?" Yeah. Yeah. I commit that to you, brethren. And um, 
Amen. It's, that's why I confess that's what I want for you and for anybody else that loves everybody that loves the Lord. Amen. Is to have this full assurance of faith, full assurance of hope, full assurance of understanding. And you'll be, once you have it, you'll be glad you have it. Amen. 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 Brother Gene has our exhortation tonight.